All right, guys, had an interesting week in uh, getting bargains on comics the last couple of days. Uh, I want to show them to you. Got uh, some books from a book fair. Tell you a little story about where I got some of the other books set. Uh, not, nothing real exciting. And then I went back to that um, place that shall remain unnamed uh, that I went to a couple videos back videos ago. If you go back and look at it, quarter books, variants and stuff, and I got some more from them. <clears throat> and probably today I'm shooting this, I think it's November 3rd, 2013. Probably in two days, uh, I have um, some time off work due to election day. I want to be putting some lots up of uh, variant covers from Marvel and DC up on uh, eBay. And it's, they're going to be pretty cheap. Probably like $5 lots, have four or five books a piece in them or something. But we'll, we'll see. Anyway, I <clears throat> got this at the book fair at the school I work at. Walked in, looked around before all the kids got to go in there. And I uh, found this Baltimore the Plague Ships, Ships from Dark Horse by... Chris Golden and uh, Mike McNola, and it was five dollars. Look at that, five dollars. Left the price on there just for you guys. Okay, found these uh, somewhere. I don't know where I found these, but uh, I think I ended up paying about an average of two bucks a piece for these. This is volume five of Why the Last Man, uh, Ring of Truth. Read this. It's pretty good. Which you know, no big secret there. Uh, this is by Brian K. Vaughn. But uh, anybody, it has the sticker on there and the original price sticker and I don't know if it's showing up but it's all it's gummy and it's starting to uh, collect dirt I used to have a way of getting that off and I have completely forgotten it so anybody has a trick to getting the uh, price tag sticker glue gummy stuff off of trades without damaging them let me know I uh, got this one also uh, these retail for like fifteen dollars yeah fifteen dollars I got them for like maybe two bucks a piece and here's book seven. I'm halfway through it. Uh, Paper Dolls. That's volume five and seven. I had volume one and two and sold them on eBay. I'll probably do the same thing with that. Okay, I went to the comic book uh, place where I got the quarter comics and stuff, you know, that I was talking about. And then I needed, after leaving there and riding around a little bit, I needed to use the bathroom. So I go into this place just to use the bathroom. And I look over and there's this little old man who's got three tables around him like in a horseshoe. And he's sitting there with his hands, his arms crossed. And he's sitting cross-legged at the same time, too. Turns out this was some guy that drove over from Kentucky to West Virginia to just sell some books and some trading cards and stuff. And I got these books for five bucks a piece. Here's a variant cover for the DC-52 Batman number 7 at the Mercy of the Court, uh, part of the Court of Owl stories. Uh, I think it's a pretty common variant. I don't think it's a huge one. Um, here's the original cover, uh, number 7. Snyder, great stuff. Uh, found number 15 and you know you can see what he had a mark there two bucks a piece but I got all these for five and then he also had Batman the Dark Knight uh, Returns number 14 um, and you're going to see that I had some other comics here I don't know if I showed or not but I, this is going to be part of a uh, lot on um, eBay in a few days but yeah number 14 and what was funny about finding this off the old man you know up in West Virginia was that um, I found these somewhere uh, and uh, it ended up giving, they ended up being the numbering lined up just right. So that was 14. Here's 15. Uh, I had these before. Picked them up again. Read them. Said I still don't want to keep them. 16. So these will probably go on eBay. Number 17. Ethan Van Skyver came in with a uh, Matt Hatter. 18. And then we jump up here to 21, where uh, you know looks like the Hatter is still around or something. All right. So now we're into the major quarter comics. And I was very happy to find these. I'm going to go real quick because there's a bunch of them. But this is 1 through 12 of Wednesday Comics. And they had all kinds of creators on them. And like you have Dave Gibbons and Ryan Souk on uh, Commandy. Uh, Paul Pope jumped in here. He had Brewbreaker, Gaiman and Neil Gaiman and Mike Allred on a Metamorpho story. You had Teen Titans, Strange Adventures by Paul Pope. And on and on. And uh, it was 12 issues and you unfold these. These came out in 2009. You unfold these and each story gets a big page like that. And you just kind of read it like an old-timey newspaper going back to the funnies. So, they were to put this in a trade, but I think the trade is like 50 bucks or something for her. But anyway, there's one. There's 12 of them. There's two. And on the back it gives you the more features. Three. Quarter a piece for these. And I think these were $4 when they came out, which I thought was ridiculous five because it's pulp cheap paper maybe they I don't know if they treated it with something or not 
and they're folded so there's no staples there's no real cover art you know seven um, had dead man and Hawkman on it and there's some in Sergeant Rock that's what I got excited about uh, one of the Kubert brothers wrote it and Joe Kubert came in and drew it a Sergeant Rock story in there number eight you get the point number nine Number 10, so good to see Commandy in there. Ryan Sook did an outstanding job with the artwork. Number 11, just a great Kirby character. Number 12, and I think he's trying to infiltrate the uh, Ape City for the uh, his uh, Tiger Brothers, Tiger Friends. Alright, now, I got these solely to put on eBay. I have no idea if they'll be worth anything or anything or not, but Daniel Way comes on here. And this is Dakin, Dark Wolverine number five. I want to put these up for sale. Number six does appear to have some major, some uh, pretty interesting characters. This is an homage to Wolverine number one, the his first ongoing series. Number seven. Uh, jump up here to sixteen. So I understand that's the son of Wolverine. Seventeen. 18 19 20 that looks familiar as well as this this cover 21 22 23 I don't know if that was an intentional or not but it kind of has Wolverine having sort of a film noir look to him like if you didn't if you just glanced at this it would look like he was some detective in the 40s and then, uh, yes, yeah, and number then we come up here, uh, Dark Wolverine, where I believe uh, they can took over, uh, number seventy five, eighty four, part of the siege. I'm eighty five. Oh wait, eighty four, eighty five. I have a variant coming here somewhere. And that's those, and those will be a lot on eBay. And then I got number one of this. This is Joe Quesada's uh, first uh, work that he did. It was on the Ray at DC. And I have number one over there, but here's number two. And number three. Like I said, this is by uh, Joe Quesada. I think this was six issues. Yeah, six issues. So it's just kind of cool to have his first work. Um, filling up a gap. Uh, I'm getting real close to having the entire Jeff Johns run. Uh, here's number 27. Got this for a quarter. A little beat up, but I'm, I'm alright with that. It's kind of got like a some stress not wearing on and stuff like that but number 27 these are actually hard to find now why did you get this you say uh, a couple of videos back I picked up a whole bunch of one millions the books from the uh, DC one million crossover event but the reason I got this is uh, from a title I never read of Cronus this is from oh, oh what year was it this is from 1998 and this is some early artwork by one Mr. J. H. Williams III. So we just had to get that because Mr. J. H. Williams is just one hell of an artist. And he, ah, Vampire the Masquerade, we used to play that. Anyway, it's a White Wolf role playing game. But uh, he's uh, currently doing um, the Sandman um, book that Neil Gaiman has come out with. So it was kind of cool to have some of his early work. Got this for a quarter, number 22. I'll probably put that in there. This one's got uh, some spine, some stress wear right here. Some two, I can feel two places on the spine and it's traveling across the cover. Um, yeah, a little banged up and stuff. Somebody just didn't, they just didn't put a cover on it. Um, comic book cover. This was to fill up some gaps. <clears throat> I think I might just need one or two of the Alan Davis Excalibur. They also had the 20 issue run that Warren Ellis did on Excalibur and I had it in my hands and I was just looking at it and I'm like, ah, I don't really want this. So I just went ahead and just picked up these. 48, 50, 52, 54. Alan Davis is just, his writing will surprise you. 61. 62. Alan Davis started out the series with Chris Claremont and uh, they worked up a bunch of characters that uh, they brought in a bunch of characters that Alan Moore and Alan Davis had created for uh, his run on Captain Britain in the early 80s when Alan Moore was writing Captain Britain over in uh, England. And then uh, Alan Davis left and they came back around issue 42 or something. Not only did he come back but he started writing the book and it just it's just some superb stuff. 63 
Then uh, he took a big break sometime in the 50s and came back and finished off a few more issues in the 60s, which uh, I've never read. 64, 65, and tell, don't tell me Alan Davis is not a uh, Kirby fan. This costume, if you turned it all red with that heartbeat going across it and stuff, Ben Boxer from Commandy, I'm telling you. Now we're into the variant covers. And these were all a quarter a piece. Um, as you can see, they were originally going for stuff like 20 bucks. But, uh, you know, and I know these probably won't sell. Some of these I'm going to keep. I mean, I, I just wanted them and for a quarter piece. Why could I not? Brightest Day number 2 with a painted cover. Brightest Day number 10, the variant cover. Um, and I love the Blackest Night stuff and uh, the stuff that Jeff Johns was doing with Superboy Prime. There is a variant cover for 507 with the Legion in it. I think this is like my second or third copy. If they had variants, I went back and I grabbed them all this time. Then I found some uh, I hadn't seen uh, stuffed in a box way, way down under a table. It was amazing. 509. Okay, and then I, these, I have no idea what these were worth. But the James Robinson came on and took over the Justice League uh, for the last 17 months. I think he did 17 issues and an annual or two and a special or something. But here's a variant cover for, uh, I think, what was his first issue. Anyway, numbers, you know. And then uh, the rise of Arsenal, I can already tell I'm not alright with this because there is no reason in the world to uh, uh, blow up Arsenal's arm. So I don't know if that would have made me angry or not, but I'll check it out. Um, I just got this because it was a variant cover. Brightest Day, Justice League Generation Lost, I think this is number 10. It's a variant cover, so I just went ahead and got it. And I have to look these up because I think these are variant covers because I know this is... Uh, the original price tags were 20 bucks on some of these, but this is Batman the Winding Gyre. Oh gosh, I'm really embarrassed if I just pronounced that wrong. Uh, anyway, it's the Kevin Smith Walt Flanagan book uh, miniseries, two of six, and I think these are variant covers. And any uh, Batman variant covers, you know, I would grab. Batman's a very popular character, as if you know, know anybody doesn't know that. Here's a Gene Ha variant cover. I like some to look them up. I'm assuming that they're variants because they have it on the back here on the uh, little. It's going to show up. Yeah, they got them marked as variants, so I'll trust them on that. Uh, number four, a variant, and then we're back into the Blackest Night. Uh, Teen Titans variant. I think I have this, but I'm going to get it. This was selling for twenty bucks in the store. All right, and then I was really surprised. This one of the Marvel variants. Uh, really surprised to find this one. Uh, Fifteen dollars was what this was selling for. I got it for a quarter. Captain America Reborn. Um, I don't know what number this is. They got number three. And this is a variant cover by Lionel Yu, and I love that cover. And I'm pretty sure every one of these books had three or four different covers at least. So I uh, got some more of the Joe Kubert uh, Captain America Reborn variants for issue number five. This will make four of them that I have now. And I absolutely love this cover, man. This is another variant for number five again. Uh, this looks like a John Cassidy. And it's the Invaders on there. With the Destroyer. I, I think Kirkman had a... Robert Kirkman, who does The Walking Dead, had a Destroyer miniseries he did under the Max line. Now, I think my personal taste... I think Secret Invasion is unreadable. It's ridiculous. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, man. This cover here... Of uh, Scar of a uh, of um, I'm not gonna spoil anything. Of a uh, Spider Woman on a throne. That is just a beautiful, beautiful cover. I really like that. It has soul. And I got two of these, I believe. Yeah, Secret Invasion and Variant Edition Number Three with a big Nick Fury cover. Yep, there we go. Yep. Another one. All right, then we got Variant Edition Number Four. Black Widow, Spider Woman, Anthony Stark. That's funny. They put the two spider themed women on there. And I'm going to have to look at these up. The Marvel's Project. I don't remember this book taking off. It is an Ed Brubaker book. It's Steve Epting. So I know it's going to be good. But here's. I've got. I had some variant covers that I got for this from the other lot haul. But I found these this time. There's the Golden Age Angel on there. And these have a $20 price tag on them. And this is two of eight. No idea. I'm. It says. Um, it says Perel variant. I don't know what that is. I'll have to look those up. Uh, here's another one. Number two of nine. Big human torch variant cover. Yeah. 
three variant cover. Now another variant cover for number three. Uh, I kind of like this cover, kind of moody. Um, looks like it's number four and number five with the red skull on it. All right, and there's my Dark Wolverine variant cover number 78. I have a ton of these Dark Wolverine variant covers in the back too. All right, and I, and I picked up, these were probably much all doubles and stuff, but I picked them all up for the 70th anniversary of Marvel. Here's uh, Captain America 601, um, Fantastic Four 570, a bunch of copies of that. Yeah, Incredible Hercules 132. The Mighty Thor cover. And then these were new ones. I was lucky to find these because these were also in a box shipped way up under a table and stuff. I actually had a little bit of time to dig through this time. But here's Wolverine First Class number 18 variant edition. Secret Wars, Secret Warriors number 7 variant edition, edition with uh, uh, Nick Fury. I don't know if I want to sell that one or not. Uh, new Mutants number 4 with Magic on the cover. All right, I appall this, so I will definitely be selling this, man. It is ridiculous for me to think that Hank Pym would turn him into himself into the Wasp. I'm just uh, variant edition number 28 of uh, the Mighty Avengers. Uh, very cool looking Luke Cage here, variant uh, for the new Avengers number 56. Uh, then we got some variant editions of Dark Avengers. Here's number six with a variant cover. Uh, Dark Avengers number 7. Looks like there's some kind of utopia going on with a big anarchy symbol in the middle of it. These are Warren Ellis books. Uh, New Mutants in issue 12 with some kind of iron, uh, medieval looking Iron Man with a... I don't know what that is. I'm going to pretend. But that's issue 12. And then we have a Joss Whedon written Runaways. This is variant edition number 28 with a zombie cover. I really don't know if I'm going to get rid of that or not. I really like that. You know, the zombie covers are just cool. Even though, look at that, a plate of brains. All right. Well, anyway, that's the variant cover haul. Thanks for staying in there, and uh, I might have a uh, another video coming up later here with some uh, other haul stuff.